Good morning and welcome to Cup of Faith for this Wednesday, December the 29th. Only a couple of days left in 2021. I trust your Christmas was a good one and you were able to spend it with friends and family and, and uh, in general people that you love. Uh, trust that there was not too much uh, divisive conversation around your Christmas table and uh, overall you were glad uh, that, that you've had Christmas this year. Uh, without getting too far into this, I know that there have been past Christmases that many of us have wished we'd never had, and, uh, uh, but I'm praying that this was a good one. It's winter out there, isn't it, folks? It's, it is so cold. It, we're in a cold snap, and we're probably all plugging our vehicles in. Uh, probably not wanting to go out too much, and, uh, but it is what it is. Now, right now in my home, uh, Brenda is still in bed, which is unusual for her, but she did get the week between Christmas and New Year's off uh, with pay, so we were very uh, grateful for her company about that. And Cameron, our youngest son, who's a high school teacher in Momart here in Saskatchewan, uh, he also gets his Christmas break off, so he's been spending his time just kind of recovering. He, he works very hard both with, with, with school and as the summer program director of Katepo Lake Camp, and they have some, uh, a winter camp coming up in February. And uh, so it, we're, we're grateful to have him home, and yesterday in our home, just, you know, just to give you a little bit of an inside peek of what our house is like, uh, Brenda and our daughter Cher, and, uh, who lives just outside of Moose Jaw, she and all the kids, her kids, she has five of them, if you can believe it, uh, they came over and they made lefse, which is, if I'm correct, is a, a, a Norwegian, it's kind of a flat pastry bread thing and you put butter and sugar on it and it's it's really good but it's a, it's made out of potatoes and but it's really a big deal to make it it takes a better part of a day but I'm getting a little too far into the weeds here uh, I, I have a question for you though on a scale of 1 to 10 how did you see your 2021 and on a scale of 1 to 10 how are you going to see 2022 uh, there, there was a survey that came out yesterday in the National Post that uh, talks about people's attitudes about last year, where they were at a year ago, what they thought of 2021 was going to look like, and where they think this 2022 is going to look like. And allow me just to, to do a little bit uh, of, of, of sight reading here for you. It said um, that it published a, a survey of over 1,500 Canadians uh, and what our feelings were about the coming year. And though not overwhelming, we're generally, as Canadians, optimistic about 2022, as we feel that it can't be any worse than 2021 was. I don't know about you, I went into 2021 uh, very optimistic. I thought COVID is over, the vaccine is going to be here, and life is going to go back to normal, and I didn't anticipate any personal challenges, and so I thought it was going to be a great year of golfing and sailing and a little bit of work, and, uh, and my year didn't turn out like that, and a lot of people's didn't. But anyway, um, they, we, we didn't feel that this next year was going to be any worse than the last one. And the article also suggested that we have uh, three things. Number one, we, we have learned to tolerate the reality of COVID and the protocols, the mandates. Secondly, is that our standard of, our standards of what an acceptable lifestyle, they've lowered. Uh, at first, we said, why do I have to wear a mask everywhere I go? Um, why do I have to get a vaccination? Uh, and I know there's a lot of, lot of opinion here, and I'm not going to come out on the right side or the left side on this. I'm just going to say, we, we didn't like lockdowns. We didn't like social distancing. And now we're getting used to it. So it's, a, it's a way of life. And another is, is that there is a general optimism in the availability of vaccines and that they're going to solve, if not all of our problems, most of our problems. So across all ages, 52% of Canadians, when asked to compare their 
present happiness to how they were last year, they say they're about the same. I actually asked Brenda and Cameron this last yesterday and last night, and how are, how are you feeling? He said, yeah, about the same. So they, they fit into that. And according to this new national poll, 42% of junior adults, that would be people that are ages 18 to 34, say that they're happier than they were a year ago. Compared to barely a quarter of people aged over 55. If we're in that category of over age 55, we're not as optimistic. As a matter of fact, there's not a lot of us that are optimistic. And if you have had personal challenges that go with our age, you have some, some valid reasons not to be optimistic. So let me ask you a few questions before we, we I, I give you some, some final thoughts. Number one, so, so how are you feeling about the coming, coming year? Uh, good, bad, indifferent. Does the past year affect your outlook? probably for a lot of us, but maybe for some of us, we have reason to have a, a very good look on the next year. And what will a better year look like for you? If you say it's gonna be better, what, what specifically are you talking about? Regardless of the past year, folks, I have something for you that uh, will hopefully make your outlook a little bit more positive. And first of all, from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, can I give you this assurance? this promise that is from God's own heart. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, and they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Part of the reason I tell you this now, knowing that some of us are carrying scars and facing challenges, is that we need to have this promise. We need to carry it with us to help sustain us and to know that God always has our back, no matter what we're going through. And another verse, which I just read, I guess it was last week as I near the end of my one year Bible reading is from 3rd John chapter two. And I have to admit up front for some people, this is a controversial verse because uh, we're, we're not exactly sure of the meanings. And so let me, let me dive into it. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And that word prosper is the tricky word because we think automatically, oh, it must mean money. And a lot of, can I say, unscrupulous uh preachers have said if you send me money God will prosper you we don't guarantee it we don't offer to send the money back we just say this is God's will and and it and and honestly it I I believe that this is a reflection of the character of, of God but let me talk for a few minutes what the word prosper means it uh, it's found in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament and in essence, it, it means to push forward, that it's God's will for us to move ahead in, in, in various senses of our lives, figuratively and, 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 and literally. It, it's like a breakout after, after all of this time of, of battling and being in challenges that, that, uh, that, we would, that God would take us to a place that we have broken out of the old. We've broken out of the struggles and we're moving ahead to, to go over to, it, it, it's, and in a sense it is profitable to, to be profitable, to be profitable in, in life, to be profitable in relationships, to be profitable in, 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 in our endeavors, to be profitable <clears throat> even in, in finances. And, and, I, and I want to tell you that this word, prosper, it is not exclusively about money and nor does it exclude money. And, and in the New Testament, um, and specifically where this verse is here, I'm just gonna take a drink here, I'm getting a little froggy. In the New Testament, it, it means to something like to, to go, for things to go well with us. 
So this is what this great apostle, this apostle loves us. He prays that things will go well with us. And, and, and to succeed in reaching or to succeed in, in, a, in our affairs, including business ones. So, as I, as I said already, I think that this verse uh, from 3 John chapter 2, it reflects God's character and his capacity because God's arm is not so short that he cannot help. In John chapter 10, verse 10, from the very mouth of Jesus himself, he said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. So it creates a question for, for you and I, how do we get there? How do we live in that? Uh, now that we've kind of gotten a bit of a sense of, of what it means and, and what's God's will for, for our lives to, to break out of the struggle and to move ahead um, and, and to succeed in our endeavors, let me give you four things. For us to get there, we have to take people with us. And from Matthew chapter 25, it's, it's very much about how we care for others. Uh, throughout the scriptures, God really looks at that closely in our lives, how, how we care for each other, how we think about each other, whether we love or hate each other. And, and in this chapter 25, the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world, for I was hungry and you fed me and I was thirsty and you gave me a drink and I was a stranger and you invited me into your home and I was naked and you gave me clothing and I was sick and you cared for me and I was in prison and you visited me so we don't leave people behind as we break through and we break out and the if you follow that and 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 the people say uh, the, the, the sheep and goes as sheep say when did we do that well as much as you have done to the least of these you have done so for me so that's how we care for others a little bit more in John chapter uh, in John 3 uh, 3rd John um, it, uh, especially from verse 11 it's a, a base, it, it teaches us that we should be if, if our souls are going to prosper we have to do good we have to follow good and we have good examples and we we've got to engage in good truth now you would say well automatically well all truth is good well some is false truth so and and i just a little bit of advice just take it for what it's worth is is that look for people and look for truth that build us up and the third thing is Live and think in faith and trust. Faith that what Jesus did for us on the cross and his sacrifice is it's enough and it's once and for all. And that because of that, we are brand new people and we stand before God as his children and not as his enemies. And trust the, the trust in him going forward. And, and if I could say it this way, if, if we trust God for with our very souls because of what Jesus did if we really trust him then we can trust him with everything else in our lives including the challenges and and what he said in Mark chapter 8 is really important and I think I'm going a little bit long and I'm almost done I promise if you try to hang on to your life you will lose it but if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news you will save it and so often we're in a mentally survival mode and maybe even physical survival mode and we've got to do everything we can to look after ourselves and yet i think jesus is calling us to a higher standard of living an adventurous standard of living a daring faith standard of living that we will trust him with everything about our lives instead of moving into survival or self-preservation and the fourth thing, the last thing is, is prioritize the important over the urgent. Again, from Mark 8, for what will it benefit you again if you gain the whole world? 
If you only think about prosperity as money and you are successful there and you have made more money than you could ever imagine, what does it profit you if you gain all of that but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Great questions. So let me summarize and thank you for your patience today. Perhaps best said again by the words of Jesus, who again, he came that we would have an abundant life, a full life. Um, seek first the kingdom of God. This is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything that you need. How better than to define this coming year that we will prosper or we will break out, we will move ahead and we will be in good health. It, it is a prayer. It's not a command. I get it. A lot of us have and, and are facing health challenges, but that these things will happen in our lives even as our souls prosper. And let's make that our first priority for us to grow in our spiritual lives and then the things that we need, God will add to us. So my friends, cheers. Happy New Year. Enjoy your cup of faith today.